Hey everyone, it's Jonathan from Motorpsychology. If you're a new viewer, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Your support is greatly appreciated. So in today's video, it's going to be about changing the spark plugs and spark plug wires on the 350 engine on the C3 Corvette. Now it may seem a little bit simple, but let me tell you, this task is not at all simple. And it's because of how the spark plug wires are run and the access to the spark plug. So it's not the easiest location to get into. And that's why I decided to do a video on this. So you're gonna see uh, how I did it, some of the challenges that I had, and I finalized the video with changing the rotor out on the distributor as well. So stick around for the video and let's get into it. <music> Okay, so for this job, I'm just checking the gaps for the spark plugs. The type of spark plugs that I'm going to use are the AC Delco and they are the R45TS, which is what's recommended for this type of C3 engine. And if you look down here, uh, as far as looking at the gap for a 1977 350, 195 horsepower, we're looking at the AC r45 ts's and the gap is the 0 0.045 which is right here so 197 or 1977 350 195 horsepower and there you are the r45 ts's at 0 0.45 so that's what i'm going to set mine at here's the actual spark plugs and they look like this. There we go. It's actually a pretty cool looking spark plug. And the gap is 0 0.045 or 0 0.045. What I have here is a feeler gauge for spark plugs. One of these is a 045, which is this one here, right there. So it's a wire that is gapped at 045. Um, there's also another tool on here. This little guy here helps you bend the spark plug um, like so. So if you wanted to adjust the gap, this guy here goes in like so, and then you just use that to bend it. That's a better fit there, and you just open it up and it will get the new gap. So let's see what these are preset at. I bet you it's pretty close. So 045, and it should slide in here nicely. So right now that's too tight, so that this space here needs to be opened. There's another type of gauge as well. It's the same as the other one, but you'd have to look for a 045, which is right here on the scale, and then it's just a matter of sliding this guy in and right now you can see that we're a little bit shy of 045. So we've got to open that spark plug up a little bit. And I'm going to do this eight times for these guys. So I'm going to use this tool just to open it up. Let's see if you can see how it works here. It just opens that up a little bit. And then you can take this. 045 and see if it fits in that fits in but it fits in a little bit easier so now you have to close it a little bit until you get it right on not bad so it's a 
it's a decent fit through. It's not super tight, but you want it to just rub a little bit. So I'd say that's at about a 0 0.45. That fits in there. Let's see how it works on the other gauge. So it should slide up to 0 0.45 now. Yep, stops right on 0 0.45. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and gap all the other ones before I put them in, but that's the basic procedure for that type of spark plug. These are the wires that I have. And we'll have another look at these later on when we're outside, but basically all the wires, they should be pre-cut to the length that is required for that type of Corvette. So let's hope that works out fine. Well, down here in the C3, nothing is easy. So the spark plugs are down here somewhere. So this is the valve cover here. And the spark plugs are underneath the header here. And I'll show you later. The wires run through this metal cover, which is kind of like a channel that the wires go through it just pulls up like this so first of all it's normally screwed in down here but i've unscrewed that when i did the distributor so anyway this just slides out like this and then you can access the wires which are down here. So I'm going to remove this and you'll see the distributor here. And remember that diagram that has them labeled? That is what I'm going to use as my guide. Hey everyone, it's me. I'm here once again working on the C3 and I'm going to be replacing the spark plugs and the spark plug wires. So it's a job that's not too difficult, but you never know. There's always gonna be some snags that are involved. So I've gapped my spark plugs and I'm gonna get around to removing the old ones. So before I do that, I wanna use my air hose and some compressed air to blow out any debris that could be around where the spark plugs are. So I'm gonna do that first and then I'm gonna get around to replacing these spark plugs. So I'm looking under the engine here and we've got spark plug wires that come in here there's another spark plug that's over here and there's going to be another one back there and the other one is up there somewhere so they're pretty tight spots you know it's going to be interesting to see how to get them so got one two three and the other one is way up here somewhere there's that spark plug wire and we've got another one over here So we're going to work on getting those out. This is your typical spark plug removal socket. Inside it is a little piece of rubber that will protect the spark plug insulator, which is important. So. This one is a 5 8 and that's the size of this particular spark plug. The spark plugs are a little bit easier to see on the left side of the engine or as I'm facing the rear, it's the right side of the car. So the spark plugs are in here. The wires come down through this channel and then through these things as well. So these are meant for the um, spark plug wires. So as you can see, as I slide around here, you can see more of the spark plugs up here. Pretty easy access in there. A lot easier than the other side. So I'm going to try these ones first. This one looks uh, pretty grimy. So it'll be interesting to see what the actual spark plug looks like in there. Hopefully not too bad. 
So I'm going to attempt to take this one out first. I think what I'm going to do is each time I take a wire off the spark plug, I'm going to take the wire out and then I'm going to replace a new one at the same time. So I think I'm going to do the wire and the spark plug at the same time, but we'll see. So I'm going to try and get that one out. All right. I've got my air hose here just to clean these areas out. All right, let's pop this one off here. Always crazy angle. Tuck that out of the way. So now we have the exposed spark plug here and I'm just gonna use the spark plug wrench and get that out. Sticking this up and in there, if I have the right amount of room here. I don't think I need the extension on actually. There we go. Now that should come straight out without much difficulty. <laughs> yeah, famous last words. <laughs> All right. Got a bit of leverage here, let's give it a try. Oh, ouch, came out no problem. Let's see what it looks like when it comes out. Ooh. There's the spark plug itself. It doesn't look particularly bad, you guys. So I'm still gonna put in a new one, but it doesn't look too bad. So I'll be back in a sec to put the new one in. Here's the new spark plug here that is going in. It's gapped at 0 0.045. And the torque value on this is 15 foot pounds when it's put in. So I'm gonna put this in the spot and tighten it up. So I've got the torque wrench set at 15 foot pounds on here, which is right there, lined up to 15 and I'm just going to torque this in. There we go. That's at 15 right there. And that is it. Then under normal circumstances, you put this wire back on it, but I'm going to change the wire as well. So I'm going to go and try and pull this one out. So the wires that I'm looking at are once again fed through this channel. So I'm going to remove this piece of metal that I'll replace later. Here are your high tension cables or high tension wires or spark plug wires. And I'm just going to refer to my book to figure out what wire I'm pulling out for that spark plug. So we're going to be looking down 
the engine. Here's the wires down here. And they're actually zip tied way down there. So I'm going to have to undo the zip tie and that way I can separate the wires. I got the zip tie undone down here. Let's pull that out. There's the zip tie for the wires. Now I should be able to fish out the one that I was looking for. Uh, all right, here it is coming out. This is for the number seven. And you can see it's a super short wire and it goes into this area of the distributor. So I'm going to pull this one out and then I'm going to measure it with the new ones and see which one I need. There we go. Got that one out. Now I need to find one the same as this. Okay, I have two of the spark plug wires here. This one is the new one. This one is the old one from the number seven. So some people may be wondering which side to put on them. So a good way to remember is the side that goes on the distributor is a little bit thinner as far as the material, um, less insulation, and then the hole is a little bit bigger. I don't know if you can see that. And then there are ridges inside the side that needs to go on the distributor. Whereas the one for the spark plug is smooth. So with the new ones, it's easy. The one that has this on the top, that little nub, that goes on the distributor. And you can see the ridges inside it as well. It's also thinner rubber. That's thicker rubber and more insulation and also no ridges on it. So that's how you determine which one's which. So this goes on the distributor. This one goes on the spark plug. So we're at the distributor. I'm going to put on the wire for spark plug number seven. And remember, it's the big one with the ridges on it in there. And it's just a matter of clipping it on. Like so. It's ready to go. I just have to thread it down and hook it up to the spark plug. Okay, we're down underneath the Corvette again. This is the first wire that I just threaded through. It simply comes through here and is going to clip on to that spark plug. And that is as simple as that for this one. This is going to clip on with a little bit of force, but you'll be able to feel it click when it's in place. There we go. That one is done, ready to go. Now I'm going to move on to this one and pull that one out as well. So same routine, pop this guy off. There we go. That one's off. I'm going to take the spark plug off. <laughs> Great. There we go, it's in, put this guy in, nice, there's a little piece of metal in the way, so we will need the extension on this one, I hope that works, <laughs> great, I'm going to have to move this piece of metal out of the way, should be able to fit this in now. Yeah. All right. That's in, ready to go. It's just a matter of loosening it. Oh, there we go. Take this one out. There's that one out. Just going to get the new plug, double check the gap, and put it in. I have the new one gapped at 0 0.045 and going to put that in. 
So I'm going to stick it in here. Come on, there we go. And just screw it in. Get the torque wrench, put that in, tighten that up. That's 15 right there. Good to go. Take that out. That spark plug is in. Now I'm going to switch up this wire. I'm trying to get the second wire through which is right around here almost got it I'm gonna tuck it around these two for now there we go and then this one goes up and onto this spark plug nicely clipped on so there is two done I'm gonna go ahead and do the other ones same process just repeat it for each one of those the longer wires are going to be rooted down underneath this thing so I'll see if I can show that but for now I've got to try and get there's a spark plug up here that I've got to try and get out which doesn't look super easy but it's probably doable there's not much room in there though First of all, I'll grab this and get that out. <laughs> Alright, got that out. Not too sure which wire it is. Whoa. It's an interesting clip. Make sure that I put that back on. I guess it's going to be the last wire there. So this one can find its way down through here. Huh. I might have to unbolt this here. See that bolt there? And that bolt there, I'm probably going to have to loosen it to get this wire down properly. Pretty sure. I don't think that's going to go through. Yeah. So I'll be undoing that. Two different size nuts, which is awesome. <laughs> that one up there is a 7 16th. Take that off. This guy should pop out now. Should. There we go. Get that guy out. I think I'll degrease this anyway. And now we have access to wherever that wire is. Wow. So this wire here also runs underneath the engine mount to a certain extent. So that's interesting. I almost have it out. Not fun. There we go. Finally got that one out. So we're back on top here. 
this is the third wire that we're doing and it clips in way over here on the distributor there we go that's in and then it's just going to be a matter of threading it down through here which basically is going to go under these guys like so and then it's going to run its way all the way down here And we're back down underneath the Corvette and I'm fishing for the third wire that I just put up there. Oops, just found it. And it slipped the other way. That's great. This can come down. Fired it under these two here. Oops. And remember, this one is going to go along that metal track as well. And then up into here, I have this part here all redone, ready to go on when I'm ready. I have not done the other one yet. Hopefully I'll get that out and we'll be able to refinish that. So back out to the garage. Yeah, I'm currently working on the third spark plug here. I took a little bit of a break and cleaned up this area a little bit. I'm also working on the studs that are stuck in this exhaust flange as well. And I'm going to get those out pretty soon. So I've already drilled through that one and I'll be drilling through both of those ones as well. They were totally stuck on there. So I'm going to go up top and crank that one off. All right, so I'm up top here. Should be able to get this one loose. There we go. There we go have another spark plug out got the next spark plug I'm gonna pop it in getting this one screwed in here Gonna go up top and tighten it up. Okay, we've got this spark plug in and I'm just gonna hook up the wire to it, which is this guy here. Remember that came out of the metal part. So I'm gonna hook this in here and I'm not gonna go through the motor mount on this one. All right, so we'll hook this guy up. So what we're looking at here is using the metal part to keep this guy out of the way and it'll be in there. All right, let's get the next wire out. All right, let's get this spark plug out, which is right here. Oh. Got the fourth one out. Oh, 
what you see here is I'm just putting the new spark plug back into that spot, which happens to be a pretty tight spot. But once that spark plug is in, that is all four done on the left side of the engine. I'm just getting the fourth wire for the spark plug off and I'll be down to put in the new wire in a sec. Right, so I thread this one and I'm going to stick it up on number four. All right, we've got the four spark plug wires coming down the side here. All the spark plugs are in and the new wires are in, at least on this side. And I will be putting that metal guard on here. And up there, we've got the other spark plug wire in place. Just another view of the wires here, going to the new spark plugs. And I'm gonna cover these things up shortly. So this side is pretty much done. I'm still working on the stud bolts there, but we'll get around to those. Wires are done, new spark plugs on this side. Hey, it's me, I'm still working on the spark plugs and the spark plug wires for this Corvette. So I'm about halfway done and moving on to what is the right side. Here's the distributor cap where I have a new wire, new wire, new wire, and new wire installed. And I'm going to be moving on to the right side of the engine, which is going to be removing this one, this one, this one, and that wire there. So I'm going to get into that. They look a little bit harder to access, so we'll see how that goes. We're working on the other side of the engine right now and way up here. Way back there is the spark plug, and there's another one up here. There's the other one in there that's going to be a tight fit. And this one here should be pretty straightforward. And then the other one, and that's the other one. So they're all doable, and I'm going to get to work on those. So that is one of them. There's another one up there one over there so first of all let's grab this wire off of here there we go this wire is out get that spark plug out all right let's see if we can get up here for the spark plug or what is going to be the issue here go all right all right got that spark plug out it is not the same as the other four that I took out this one is a champion spark plug so it'll be nice to put them all back with the same brand all right popping the spark plug back in. There's the spark plug that I am replacing right there. And you can see the other ones down the block. All right, let's get this guy tied up. There we go, torqued up at 15. All right, I'm gonna get the new wire on there. I've got the new wire fished down a little bit. This isn't the permanent 
solution, but I'm doing one wire at a time. That way I'll know what wire goes to what cylinder. And once they're done, I'll just tidy it up a little bit. So this guy just goes on like this. There we go. Time to move on to the next one. I'll unplug this one here. There's that one. All right, let's get this one off here. There's that spark plug out, another champion one. I'm going to go grab the new one and stick that one in. All right, putting the new one in. There we go, it's on 15. There we go. Look up the next wire here, which is coming down. And can stick this wire onto this plug up here. There's a couple other spark plugs done. You've got that one there and the one that is at the back or facing the rear end. So two done. And now we're going to move on to the other crazy ones, which are up here somewhere. I'm also going to take off this thing here as well and refresh that. Two of the wires are supposed to go behind it. So you can kind of see those two in the background. They sneak behind here and that keeps them out of the way. So I got to take this thing off and then I'll be able to take the wires off. Just trying to loosen this bracket here. All right, let's see if this will crack it. There we go, that one's out. I'm just taking out the small bolts that keep the spark plug wire guides in place. So that's what I'm working on. This one's a smaller bolt, which is closer to the top of the engine. And you already saw me take out the larger bolt. So now I'm wiggling this piece of metal out. Hopefully we'll get it out, no problem. All right, we can start working on these wires here. Get those out and take it from there. All right, working on the other spark plug, which is way up there. Once again, this is running through the engine mount area, which I don't want to thread these through that. I don't think I can get them done. I might be able to, but I doubt it. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother. Let's get this guy off. The spark plug wires that were threaded between the engine and the motor mounts were totally ridiculous. So to get those off, I had to pull the connector tops off all four of them so I could thread them out of the motor mount. So we're getting this spark plug from the top. Oh. All right, got that spark plug out right here. 
All right, we'll take this wire out. Grab this wire out of here. You can see on that wire that the top has been ripped off in order to get it threaded through the space between the engine and the engine mount. There we go, got that wire off. And here you can see me working on threading the new spark plug wire through whatever channels it needs to go in order to get this set up. So this isn't the end of this because I've got to put the guide back in place and make sure that all the wires are tucked back in place before I'm done this job. Yeah, this one can now go up here. You may notice in this video, there's a lot of me working from underneath the car and then going to the top of the car in order to get a better angle to do this work. So the majority of the shots are shot from underneath the car with a few from above. You can see in this part of the video that I'm working from above the engine bay and leaning down into the engine bay to loosen and get this old spark plug out which looks like i pretty well got it out and we'll check out the condition all right there's the other spark plug last one out time to put in a new one there you can see the spark plug hole from there and i'm going to try and thread the spark plug in there we got the last one ready to go in a super tight spot in there. I'll just tighten it up and we should be good to go. Last spark plug on. And doing the final spray here. Well, this is where I am at the moment. I've got all the spark plugs out. One's gone missing in action. Don't know where that is. Spark plugs are interesting. They can tell you a lot about what's going on in your engine as well. And although these worked or appear to work fine, it's always a good idea to look at the condition of the electrodes here. And in my case, they're all more carbonated or have more carbon on them than you would like. So I wanted to show you something here. Oh, the other interesting thing is one side of the engine had the right AC Delco plugs in them. The other side was working with Champion and they had a RV15YC4 for two of them. And then the other one was just a RV17YC and I don't know if there's any difference between them but at the same time it doesn't really matter because I've got the right plugs in there now so that's good. So I just want to show you something about spark plugs. Put those aside. So this has a bunch of pictures and conditions plus possible symptoms as well and recommendations which is good. So if you have a spark plug like this that looks like that, you just match it up to the best looking diagram or picture. And in my case, they're mostly carbon deposits on there. So it tells you some issues that you can look into to help you do some fine tuning. So that's what I'll do at a later date. I'll take a picture of this and I'll put it in the video so that you have a better reference on that. So what I have here is kind of like a cleaned up version. I basically wire brushed this thing down, cleaned it with degreaser, got it down to the bare metal, and then have painted it with some cast iron looking engine paint just to make it look nicer. So I've got that one and this is for the right side. And this is the first one that I took off, which is on the left side. 
and that doesn't look too bad. At least they're clean and grease-free or oil-free at this time. I even got around to doing that little clip as well that's going to hold the, the wires in place. This is a shield to shield the wires from some sort of exhaust pipe, I believe. So this was actually fairly corroded and rusted. So that's all been wire brushed off and repainted so that it is as good as possible for this older vehicle. So the parts are ready to go back in. I've got the plugs in, so I'm going to get down and put these things in. All right, so I'm getting into a position where I want to put the metal cover back over on this. Uh, it's a cover uh, guy track. Uh, first of all, I'll put these wires in this little clip here. This keeps them together. I can almost put that one underneath, like so. If anyone's wondering, this bolt here holds coolant into the engine block, so that's what that's for. And there's another one on the other side of the engine block. Let's see if I can get this lined up today. There we go. Stick that in. And now we have the wires running underneath the track. Let's put the bolt through. Now you can see how I have those wires up at the top. So now put this bolt on. And the side is in. So you can see how these wires, instead of going through, I don't know, the engine mount under here, they're actually supposed to wrap around and then follow this channel back up. So that's that done. And I'm gonna go on and do the other side. All right, time to put this in. And we've got this plate up here and now it's going to be putting on the wire guides and taking it from there. All right, here's this side here. Once again, it's bolted into the engine block. The wires here are coming up nicely which is good and the other attachment for this metal thing is behind the starter motor so sometimes you can do it with the starter motor in place sometimes you have to loosen the starter motor so it's a tight fit for this little piece of metal down there but you know what because it is such a pain in the butt to do this especially if you had your oil pan on and your exhaust on um, I can see why people don't use this and don't do it properly. Anyway, it was a good opportunity for me to do it, and that's why I did it. Here is the rotor that I'm going to put in the distributor. These are the details. And it looks pretty simple. Pretty much the same as the original one. So let's swap that out and get this thing ready. Before I tuck all these wires in, I'm just going to change the rotor on this. So I'm going to pop this out, take off the old rotor. Hopefully it's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to label these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, just so I can take them off and know that they go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's not in the order of firing. I just want to label these so I put them back in the same spot. All right, let's stick these on. There we go. Now I'm just going to take the wires off. All 
All right, this should pop up nicely now. Let's get this off without unplugging those. Yeah, that's better. So, should be a straightforward replacement knowing that that one's facing that way. So, let's just take this off. Working hard not to drop those little nuts down here. All right, the rotor's out, getting the new one, getting that set up. All right, putting the new one in, super straightforward. All right, the new rotor is in place. The cap back on, or at least not completely back on, but at least on in location. It's good for now. And sticking the wires back. It's number one in there. There, onto the next side. Put number five in here. Just showing this at high speed here, it's just a matter of going around the distributor cap and plugging in the wires according to how they were numbered. There we go. Hey everyone, that concludes the video on changing the spark plugs and the spark plug wires on this C3 Corvette. So to be honest with you, this job took a lot longer than I had planned. So the main issue was threading the spark plug wires through those little tracks or those metal retainers and putting the retainers on and off. That was trickier than you would have thought. So that was by far the most time consuming part. So once again, not a very difficult job. Just take your time to make sure that you've identified the right wires to go with the right areas with, uh, within the distributor so that you don't mess up the sequence of firing when everything gets back put together. So. I'm super happy that I've got the new plugs in and the new wires and everything is fastened up the way that it should be. It looks great and I'll be moving on to the next project which I think is going to be removal of the stabilizer bar, put in new bushings, refresh that bar and get that in place. So I'm getting closer and closer to getting this thing tightened up and replacing the front suspension which I've got videos on that coming up very very soon. So once again, thanks so much for sticking around watching this video. It was a little bit longer than I had intended, but it's got all the processes and procedures in there, which will help you guys out if you ever decide to do this yourself. So thanks so much for your support. Consider subscribing if you want, and we'll catch you all in the next video, which is coming up really, really soon.